In this lesson, we'll see how to ease the typing of characters for certain kinds of situations when you're using a Windows phone. Windows phone applications have an on-screen virtual keyboard called the Software Input Panel, or the SIP. And applications can tailor the way that this keyboard is laid out so that based on the type of information that's being typed in, the process can be made a lot simpler. And this table describes some of the different ways that the SIP can be laid out. So for example, at the top of the table, you see the default value. This provides the standard QWERTY style keyboard for typing. However, if you know that the user is going to be typing in, say, a URL for a web address, you can set the input style for a text box to be tailored to typing in a URL. For example, the keyboard will be relayed out with a little dot .com button and so on. And each one of these different types of layouts, there's about 10 or so. In fact, there's probably more than just 10. These are the 10 most common. When you're using these different kinds of layouts, it can really make entering text a lot easier for the users of your application. A great example is when someone's typing in, say, a phone number. If you know that they're going to be typing a phone number in, then you can set the input scope of a text box to be, for example, telephone number. And rather than getting some giant keyboard, most of which they can't use, they'll get a telephone number pad. Let's see how this actually works in practice by looking at a real example. I'm going to open the project in my Visual Studio IDE and choose Open Project. And in the example file folder for this, you'll see that there's a start and a final version. And the final is the finished version. You can go ahead and jump ahead and look at that one if you want to, or you can follow along with me as I work on the start version here. So I'm going to open up the SIP input scope project. So what we're going to do is create a layout that has a text field in it. And then we're going to set some properties on that text field that enable the easy entry of text. So let's start by getting some controls onto our surface here. So I'll bring out a text block. I'll select that, make it a little bit bigger. And I will set the text for that to be, surprisingly enough, enter some text. Return. So below that, I'm going to put a text box. Here's my text box. And I'll make it a little bit, I'll size it properly. So now I have a text box that I can type some text in. So now we need to have some controls that control how the text box keyboard shows up. So I'll pull another text box out. And for this one, I will label it display the SIP 4. And again, remember, SIP means software input panel. So I'm not going to do all of the options I showed before. I'll just choose a bunch that I think really illustrate the advantages. So we'll pull out some radio buttons. And we'll get a whole bunch of these guys out here. Choose four. One, two, three, and four. So each one of these guys we need to put into a radio button group, remember, so that they all know how to toggle correctly. And we'll just call that group one. And we'll do this for all these guys. Group one. Group one. And last but not least, group one. Now we'll set the text for each one of these guys. So the first one will be the default setting. And then this one will be for email. And then this one will be for a web URL address. And then the last one will be for a phone number. So now I've got four radio buttons, each one of them choosing a different kind of SIP. And I will have this one, the default one, checked. So now I've set up my UI. And what I need to do now is wire up some events so that when each one of these radio buttons is chosen, the right kind of SIP gets displayed. So what I'll basically do is assign an event 
to the checked handler for each radio button. And inside the event handler, we'll see how the SIP gets set. So let's go ahead and assign some events. So I'll select this guy. And then over in the events panel, under checked, this one will be set default SIP. That looks good. And then this one here will be set email SIP. All right. And then this one here will be set URL SIP. And then finally, this guy here will be set phone SIP. So we save and save this one as well. So now I have all the event handlers wired up. So now let's go into the code and write the event handlers for each one of these guys. Since I'm going to be setting the SIP each time, what I'm going to do is write a utility function that just sets the SIP type. And I'll just define that function private void set SIP type. And that will take an argument. And the type of argument that we want to put in here is called an input scope name value. And that will be the input scope name value SIP. Now we need to write the body of this function. So basically what we need to do is first we need to check to see if the text box is not equal to null. Text box one is not equal to null. If the text box is null, it means that the page is not finished loading yet and we don't want to operate on it. So check to see if it's not null. So if it's not null, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to create a new input scope. And then once we've created the new input scope, we need to create an input scope name to go with it and then set the scope type on that scope and then assign that input scope to the text box. So here's how that looks in code. We write input scope, declare a variable equals new input scope. Now that we have that, we write input scope name, and that's the input scope name equals new input scope name. I really like IntelliSense. Now that we've got that, we have to set the input scope's name, name value field, to the argument that we were passed into this function. So we're going to set that to ISNV SIP. So we've created a new input scope, and we've set its value to whatever this function was passed. Then we tell the input scope that we created to add to its names array the input scope name we just created. That's this guy right here. And that's the guy who's had his type set. So now this text box will have the input scope named whatever the user chose among the radio buttons. And then the last step is to say this dot text box one dot input scope is equal to INPS, which is this right here. So we create a new input scope, create a new input scope name to go along with it, set the name value property to the property that we were passed in up here as an argument, add that into the input scope's names list, and then set the input scope onto the text box. That's the hardest that this is going to get. Because now all we got to do is fill in the event handlers. All we're going to do is say set SIP type to input scope name value dot default. In the default case, we just set it back to whatever the default is. For email, we'll say set SIP type input scope name value dot email name or address. For the URL, we'll call set SIP type input scope name value dot. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a URL in here. 
Yep, there it is right there. And then the last but not least one is the phone number. So we'll call set zip type input scope name value dot telephone number. Just so you can see, let me look at how many there are. I hit dot and look at how long this list is. There are a lot of input scopes that you can use in your applications. So that should be all there is to it. Let's fire up the emulator and see if this works. So we'll save it, go back to the main page, start debugging. Up comes the emulator, and we'll switch over to it. Here's my UI. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the text box, and you can see here's the default keyboard that came up. So I have, it's a regular QWERTY style keyboard, all the letters, I can choose numbers, go back to the keyboard. But that's for the default case. So now if I choose email and I click in the text box, notice how the keyboard has changed slightly. I still get letters and numbers, but now I have an at symbol and a dot com symbol. So if I was typing someone's email address, I don't have to switch to another keyboard to get to the at symbol. It's right there for me, as well as the dot com suffix. And if I click and hold on the dot com suffix, you'll see I get a whole bunch of options here. Org, com, edu, and net. So that's for the email case. Let's try the web URL case. And I think the web URL case is actually not that much different than the email case. You can see that the at symbol is gone, but the dot com is still there. And there's also a period over here on this side for typing periods in web addresses. And then last but not least, let's look at the phone number case. And we select phone number, and I click in the text box, you'll see I get a phone number pad. So this is a really great way for making it easy for people to type information into your applications based upon the type of information that it is. So using SIP input scopes, you can customize the way that text fields show their keyboards to the user.